munchkins and beers alike, it's me Munchie and today I'm in an echoey room because we are in the pet room. And today I'm going to be discussing with you guys a little bit about paper bedding. This is my cleaning day for one of the hamsters in my care. Mercury is unfortunately not doing so well in a wire enclosure so she has to be put inside of either a bin cage or a 40 gallon breeder tank that we have here at the rescue. For those who are new here, hello! I am Munchie and you're in my rescue's hamster gerbil and mouse room that does also have guinea pigs right behind you. Anyways, today I want to be discussing while we're in quarantine here. No, the mask is not because I am demonstrating that this is the pandemic and we're in quarantine. I have trouble with dusty bedding and unfortunately KT is very dusty as well as clean and cozy. But today's bedding of choice is going to be KT clean and cozy inside of here. There is other options, but we're just going to be discussing with the functionality of paper and why it's good and why it's bad and just overall talking to you guys today about people who use paper bedding and what to expect. Paper bedding can be used for a multitude of different species, but the majority of animals that use paper bedding is of course mice, hamsters, and gerbils. So paper is a really great alternative to wood because there is some wood shavings out there that unfortunately are not safe and the wood shavings that are safe like aspen unfortunately provides a rough texture and sometimes they are not really great when it comes to trying to make a burrow system for your burrowing animals. Animal, especially for gerbils. So paper is a great alternative. It prevents allergies because um, a lot of times our small animals are allergic even to safe woods. They can be allergic and get skin reactions and lesions and all these things that are not nice. And then paper bedding is also very soft and fluffy. So if you're always worried about uh, shredded wood scratching your poor animal's paws and maybe having them get cuts or maybe their paws are a little bit sore or abrasive, this is a great alternative. So like I said, today is KT Clean and Cozy. This is the unscented. There is unfortunately scented bedding. Now when I say unfortunately, the only benefits of scented bedding is for us humans. And if an animal has to be around that all the time, it's not good for them. And they probably are just as dazed and confused as you are if you are surrounded by a bunch of incense or candles that are always lit. If you are sensitive to these things, it's not good to be around them all the time. Maybe once in a blue moon, but then if you start to notice after a while, you're getting kind of dizzy, your head's starting to hurt. It's not good to always be around those things. So it's just like for any of our small animals, you don't want them to have scented bedding. So just make sure that whatever you get, there's no baking soda inside the bedding because unfortunately mice cannot handle baking soda and baking soda is actually in a lot of rodent repellers. There we go, rodent repellers. For some reason, I thought I was gonna butcher that. Rodent repeller, rodent repeller. Oh goodness, tongue twister. But anyways, just don't get paper bedding that does have any sort of mentions of baking soda because that's really not good. They probably shouldn't be using that. And again, that's only the benefit of making it smell nicer. So this right here, you see, that this is a 40 gallon tank, like I said earlier. There is this whole bag of bedding in there, which is the 49.2 liters here. Yes, my lights did flicker. You are not going insane. And it's all inside of here. I'm having to get down on the ground here to just demonstrate this for you today. Oh, this is so cool. Look at the bedding. Ah bedding. This is all fluffed up bedding. This is bedding that I had to take apart because it's very compact in these bags. Let me show you real quickly. Whoop! Oh, it's a pillow. This is very compact in here, so you gotta break it up when you first get it. So that's what, move. <laughs> that's what this turns into. So you got it all nice and fluffy. Measuring time. Haha. <laughs> so for hamster owners, you guys, usually the recommended is five to six inches with three being the absolute minimum. For mice, there's not really a big discussion. However, it seems like minimum is still around three inches for mice. I have seen people put in like two to one inch. I assume if you wanna do bedding, you don't wanna be smelling the ammonia. So the less bedding in there, the more chance you're gonna start to smell the enclosure be a little funky. So it's a good idea to probably add, especially for other animals such as mice who create lots and lots of little poops and pee everywhere that tend to go quite often because that's how they mark their territory. <sighs> You're gonna want more bedding. And they are also burrow animals. Same with gerbils, but gerbils have a higher need for the burrow system that you're gonna provide them because they spend the majority of their time 
underground, not sleeping. Oh no, 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 no. Digging tunnels, creating extensive tunnel systems for their colonies in the wild. So you want to be providing them anywhere between probably eight to 12 inches of bedding. The minimum to me for gerbils seems to be around six inches, five to six inches at least. So you can at least get them going because you know, they are quite big creatures depending on if you have males or females, they can get quite chunky. We do have a few in our rescue here, but let's measure this being fluffed right now. Now remember, if you're measuring tanks here, this black trim is causing a cutoff. There is more underneath. So just measure it as best as you can, noting that this trim is cutting off your view of what the bottom of the enclosure looks like. We measure from kind of like an average. I want to see the average is right here. I see a lot of this right here. So let's just measure it. It's about six to seven inches right there. Six and a half, maybe. Oh no, I don't know if you can see. Can you see the fluffy patterns? Anyways, take my word for it. I got a tape measure. It must be legit. Now this bedding is not the greatest for absorbing ammonia. So if you have, for instance, like a hamster that just uses one corner, it could make it a little easier to spot clean. So you could just dig up this big chunk here, move it, not, not in the enclosure, of course. So like if it's soiled on, definitely get rid of it. But you just take all the bad bedding out and you replace it with new bedding. Hallelujah. So this bedding right now is currently fluffy. If you mix it up with other different types of beddings, it can create such a great structure to hold up burrows and tunnels. But there is also a downside to this bedding. If you got a very active hamster, like a Syrian hamster, for example, want to know what they start to do? They start to walk on the surface of it. And as you can see what I'm doing, I'm literally pressing this down. Let's just press it all down to show you a good example of it. Press, 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 because this is what you get when you first get all fluffy or if your Syrian gets it all fluffy, you know? Because sometimes they just want to pile the bedding up in one corner and they have one area fluffy, but then the rest of the areas, they just walk on top of it. So that is pretty compacted down now. So that is a disadvantage of using this specific type of bedding or beddings that are very similar to the KT clean and cozy structure because a lot of beddings are processed, especially paper beddings are processed differently. So now let's measure it. This is now from six and a half inches to seven inches. This is now around five inches right there just by compacting. Now, like I said before, um, it could depend if you want to measure your bedding at when it's completely compacted or when it's fluffy. Just understand you probably should be in between that area here. So this is still acceptable for a uh, Syrian hamster use. And from what people have been saying online, because I know there's a lot of controversy about like, oh no, this doesn't look like enough bedding. You need to have more bedding. You gotta, you gotta understand. Hamsters will just take the bedding and just put it to one side. And then you might have some highs and you might have some lows. And the low areas actually might be a better area for you to put like your food bowl, your water dish, your water bottle, your wheel even, and just keep this mountain of bedding over here that they can just comfortably make into their own little natural burrow or den. At least for hamsters, of course. Um, but yes, you can also do this type of style for gerbils. But for mice, I think it's more beneficial if you add kind of like a half and half area so that they can have enough area underground to burrow, but have enough space up top because mice love activity levels above the surface. Except for say, for instance, gerbils who like to spend the majority underground and they'll go back, but they'll still come out to say hi to you. Gerbils are like that. But anyway, so of course I missed it all up again, but this is at least five inches of bedding. And I want the community to understand that sometimes it is okay to ask questions, but I see this a lot, especially in uh, different animal groups that people are just going after one another because they think their bedding is not the right size or height but when you actually measure it, it is completely fine, especially when it comes to like your structure of your enclosure and what you want to do with it. Do you want to just pile a lot of bedding to one side and have another side be kind of shallow so you can place different activities and enrichment on that side? Or do you want to just keep it all flat like this and measure it that way? It's totally up to you guys, but at least have some sort of premise of how much bedding you should actually be putting in here. Now, over time, your hamster is going to walk on it. And I don't really see a lot of hamster 
or, or gerbil or even mouse owners do this often but when it comes to spot cleaning I don't really see people you know go back in and refluff the bedding and make it look a lot taller or nicer it's just it's going to get walked on again but if we really wanted to show the impact of how much this can compact because of your animal is constantly on it here is a good example of what this is going to look like if I seriously want to compact all this paper bedding in here because I really want us as a community to come together to not just hammer each other or drive the nail you know through your head about oh you have to do it this way oh it doesn't look right and then poor hamster owners have to defend themselves because I just don't like seeing that and I see that quite often so guys I hope this video is a little bit encouraging you guys out there to realize that paper does this it's not necessarily always the owner's fault but look how much I can compact the front here and you saw all the stages of it being fluffy it being kind of padded down just so you can measure it now let's just see how it is compacted down a lot say for instance you have a pacer which might not be a good thing but unfortunately we cannot provide what we can in the wild for these domesticated hamsters dribbles or mice but what happens if you have a glass pacer that just goes back and forth back and forth back and forth a lot well they're not going to do this all the time but i'm just making a point here like look at this little pathway i've created look how small that is hopefully you guys can see because i realize this might not be a good idea but let's just measure it now i want to say right here let's measure that that is now three inches compacted all the way down for this paper that first started at 6.5 if fluffed up so while you may not want it to be that compact down it might be a good idea to start thinking of making it fluffy again and to keep it up and to keep your little one happy and joyful but i also want to encourage people out there that yes it's fun to share with each other our care and all these things but also to remember that these types of beddings do compact down, they get worn down, and you just gotta be mindful of what you're using and the benefits of your specific type of bedding. So that is all I wanna say about this type of bedding today. I hope you found it useful, the information I provided you guys, because paper bedding especially is quite fun to use, but of course, I don't know if you can see this, it's very, very dusty, but it is a good bedding to use, but understand the functionality of this bedding here because it is so light and fluffy and not to be too hard about everybody's care if they do in fact use it because there's different levels of bedding that you can have inside of an enclosure but just make sure to at least provide more than just basics make sure that there is enrichment inside your enclosure and i hope you enjoyed today's i guess little tidbits here and there about husbandry for your small animal thanks guys if you liked today's video hit like to show support comment down below with anything you'd like to say and subscribe if you're new here and would like to be a part of the Munchkin family. So thanks so much, and I hope you enjoy my little my little talk here, my munchy talk. <laughs> bye bye.